Hi, everybody, and welcome to day seven of our 40-day journey to awesome. And I'm so glad you hung with me yesterday through our opening salvo about meditation. I've been thinking about all of you, and especially those of you that have sent me notes and uh, things like that. And uh, it's really, really encourage you to hang with me on this. Today, I want to talk about some of the objections to beginning a meditative practice and to adding that to your toolkit for leaders and your toolkit for just personal and professional growth. So objection number one, and also uh, I'm going to add a little bit to kind of your meditative routine on this second day of this too. So let's talk about some of these objections. Uh, there's one really big one. There's one really hard one. And let's talk about the really big one first, that I don't have time. You know, I don't have time. I don't have the space. You know what? That one is probably the easiest one to debunk. And I'm going to challenge all of you to take a look at, you know, how much time you spend on your phone, how much time you spend playing Clash of Clans, how much time you spend on Facebook and social media and, you know, playing simply with other vanity habits. And I got to tell you, carving out five minutes, that's really it, five minutes a day, start of the day, is going to be really easy for you. Set that phone down, that text message will still be there, that email will still be there, the Facebook notification will still very much be there. But you know what? Finding that time and prioritizing that time for you so that you can become better, happier, healthier, execute what you want to do is really going to be the hardest or, or the most important five minutes you ever had. I'll tell you, I struggle with that mightily up front. You know, my initial pushback was... I don't have five minutes. I don't have 10 minutes. I don't have two minutes. Leave me be. But you know what? Now, I wouldn't give that, that time away for anything. That is by far and away the most important time that I have. Let's talk about another myth, uh, an objection for why people won't do this. And that is that they like to connect meditation to another activity. So I've heard people say, you know what? Well, I meditate when I walk. Or, you know what, when I'm at the treadmill in the gym, I meditate. Or when I'm driving, I meditate. That one scares the daylights out of me. The truth is, the human brain is an amazing thing. It really is. It can do lots and lots of complex things. Uh, combine that with some emotional intelligence, and boy, I tell you what, the brain is incredibly powerful. But what it can't do is it can't process those kinds of activities at once. And i got to tell you, you're not getting the most out of your meditation if you try to combine it with walking or try to combine it with working out at the gym, it's just not there. You need to focus that time and make that a singular activity. Now, the third one, the, the hard one, you know, and I know my roots, I know my beliefs, I know my system of values, but I've heard this a few times. And it's that, you know what, I'm Christian and I don't want to get involved in this kind of Mideastern mumbo jumbo about meditation. I got to tell you, I did the research on this a couple of years ago, looked at it again last night. Meditation traces its roots back in every single human culture. And this is not about Eastern religion. This is not about, you know, any kind of throwing away your Christian values. In fact, I've challenged my Christian friends. If you don't want to call it meditation, I'm okay with that. If you don't want to call it meditation, call it prayer because that's what it really is. It's about setting aside the time so that you can clear your mind and we'll talk about what comes in after the clearing occurs. You can call it what you like. It, Gosh, for six months, I called it quiet time because I just didn't want to use the word meditation. I didn't want to tell my family and friends that I was meditating, so I labeled it something else. All right, so for today's practice, Here's what I'd like you to do. Uh, again, let's start with our big upward stretch, our three purposeful in through the nostrils breath, out through the mouth. Hold that third one just a little bit longer. And on these breaths today, let's really focus on this. And this is the part I'm going to add for you. I'd like you to focus in on bringing in good, however you'd like to define good. Bring in and inhale good. Exhale and push out bad. The fears, the ugly, the bottom half of the emotional tornado, all those things that are holding you back, blow those out. Then let's spend a 
minute. Let's maybe shoot for two of just absolute eye closed still. Let's get your mind quiet. Let's get your emotions quiet. And you know what? Let's not add anything to this yet. Let's just still. Let's just be. You know what? The rest of this will come. When you're done, when you're ready, let's close out with those three purposeful breaths again. And when we're done with that, let's note our five pieces of gratitude in our journal and note a little bit about your experience with your opening couple of days of meditation. Be sure to add your affirmations in that as well. Guys, best of luck, and I can't tell you or encourage you enough. This isn't some kind of crackpot strange science. This is real. Wall Street Journal says it's real. Harvard Business Review says it's real. And I'm, I'm hoping you continue and join me on this journey. Happy meditating, and I'll talk to you tomorrow morning.